Hello, good morning! My name is Mom Bea and welcome to our art class. Our lesson is Fabric Design and Crafts of Southeast Asia. The cultures of Southeast Asia are marked and influenced by outside factors. Here are now the objectives. First, analyzes art elements and principles of art in the production of art and crafts inspired by the cultures of Southeast Asia. Second, identifies the characteristics of arts and crafts in Southeast Asia. And third, incorporates the design, form, and spirit of Southeast Asian objects in one's creation. Let us now discuss the factors that influence the Southeast Asian culture. Buddhist culture has a lasting and significant impact in mainland Southeast Asia. Among the neighboring countries of Southeast Asia, none seems more similar to Thailand and Cambodia. Both nations share similar customs, traditions and beliefs and ways of life. For the most part, many Laotians and Mer can understand Thai. Thus, the similarities even in arts is very evident. Let us now define fabric design. It is the creative and technical process by which thread or yarn fibers are woven together or interlaced to form flexible, functional, and decorative cloth or fabric which is subsequently printed upon or otherwise adorned. Craft. It is an activity involving skill in making things by hand. Let us now discuss the fabric of Thailand. We have Thai silk. It is produced from the cocoons of Thai silkworms. It is produced by Korat, which is the center of silk industry. And Thai silk smells like hair when burnt. Let us now go to the craft of Thailand. We have Loi Krathong and Yi Peng. These are two of Thailand's most famous festivals, also known as Thailand Lantern Festival, that both take place at the same day of full moon on the 12th Thai month. Sky lanterns are made of rice paper, string, and a frame of bamboo or wire. Next is the craft of Cambodia. We have Angkor Wat. It is the largest religious structure in the form of a temple complex in the world located in northern Cambodia. It is made of massive stone bricks and it is built in the first half of the 12th century as Hindu temple. Two main types of Cambodian weaving. First, we have Ika techniques, we have Chongkai Murter. Weavers tie and dye portions of wet yarn before weaving begins. Next, an even twill. It yields single or two color fabrics which are produced by weaving three threads so that the color of one thread dominates on one side of the fabric while the two determine the color of the reverse side. We have two Cambodian silk cloth used domestically. First, we have Pidan and Krama. Seen. Lao women's ankle long skirts whose form is undeniable but whose patterns are unique to each other. Below are pictures of Seen. Let us now discuss the fabric design of Vietnam and its crafts. Golden Thread Silk was born in Vietnam. It originated from Ha Dong, the center of weaving sericulture or the art of silk production, and jacquard looms are still used. Weaving patterns containing centuries-old symbols and characters. 
Below are pictures of golden thread silk and jacquard loom, which is an apparatus for weaving yarn or thread. Here are the Vietnamese fabric ranges. We have Shantung Tafeta. Bengalin Weave. Ebony Satin. Here is now the craft of Vietnam, which is silk painting. It showcases the countryside, landscapes, pagodas, historical events or scenes of daily life. The colors are used delicately with the canvas to make Vietnamese silk paintings, and the delicate white color found in the sky, water, or human portrait is the color of silk. Let us now conquer Indonesia with its fabric design and craft. Batik comes from the Indonesian Malay word titik, which means point, dot, or drop. Batik is to produce a design on textile through the use of dye resist. Here are examples of clothing with glue and dye resist. We have two categories of batik design, which is geometric motifs and free-form design. Here is now the craft of Indonesia, wayang kulit. It is a traditional form of puppet shadow play originally found in the cultures of Java in Indonesia. It is crafted from buffalo hide and mounted on bamboo sticks. Let us now take a look at the fabric design of Malaysia. Naturalistic motifs like leaves, flowers, and birds have been utilized to create elaborate and intricate designs. Pattern is simpler and larger. It employs brush method, and colors are lighter and more vibrant than deep colored Javanese batik. Two types of Malaysian batik. First, we have hand-painted. Artist uses the canting, a small copper container with one or more different size pipes. Next, we have black-printed. It is done by welding together strips of metal to form a metal block. The Craft of Malaysia Wow Bulan is an intricately designed Malaysian moon kite normally with floral motifs that is traditionally flown in the Malaysian state and one of the Malaysian national symbol. Another craft from Malaysia which is pewter. Malaysia produces world's finest pewter. It is a malleable metal alloy and it is a popular souvenir in Malaysia. Let us now take a peek on the Singaporean batik. It has been existing since the 12th century and it is also featured as the uniform of the flight attendants for the official flag carrier airline of Singapore. The craft of Singapore, which is Merlion. It is a mythical creature with a lion's head and the body of a fish that is widely used as a mascot and national personification of Singapore. It is also inlaid with Chinese plates and bowls as part of its design. Cambodia and Laos crafts. Handicrafts are part of their traditional culture and livelihood as they produce textiles, baskets, jars, and pottery for their daily use. In this country, they make paper by hand in the wider region for over 700 years using the sa or mulberry tree. Traditionally, some paper was used for calligraphy and for making festive temple decorations, umbrellas, fun, and cups. That ends our lesson for today. Keep on learning. Thank you.